and our uh, secretary for the Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, Secretary Villar, uh, Secretary Togade of the Department of Transportation, and the distinguished guests, of course, uh, Monk. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines today uh, stands on the brink of a dramatic transfor transformation. We are emerging from our cocoon with a rapidly growing economy and a young and hardworking population. We have enjoyed positive growth every year over the past 19 years. It is now time for us to level up and take the next big step in our national development. Duterte Nomics underlies our six-year development plan to achieve high middle income status by the time our president leaves office. Within a generation, we aim to eliminate poverty and rank among the 30 largest economies in the world. To do this, we will invest 160 billion US dollars in our physical infrastructure. We plan to build, build, build. We will also invest heavily in our people, our human capital, through better education and social services. Mm. Today, senior members of the economic team of the Philippine cabinet will talk about their respective mandates under Dotertenomics. You will be meeting the heads of these agencies. NEDA, our socio-economic planning authority, which provides the planning framework and screens individual projects. The Public Works and Highways Department, responsible for roads, bridges, and all other public works. The Transportation Department, which looks after transport systems by land, sea, and air. Secretary Tugade. The Trade and Industry Department, which promotes greater trade and investment. Uh, Secretary Mon Lopez. The Energy Department, which oversees the power sector upon which our infrastructure relies. Secretary Kusi. And the Basis Conversion Development Authority, mandated to develop land that used to belong to the former U.S. bases, military, or military bases in our country, Vince Dizon. We are also enjoined by our newly appointed Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Senator Alan Caetano. He can tell us what a stronger Philippine nation and economy will mean for the relationships among countries in our region and the rest of the world. Our milestones are ambitious. We will spend 5 to 7 percent of our GDP every year on infrastructure. We aim to reduce poverty from 22% in 2015 to 14% by 2022. We intend to achieve economic growth of 7 to 8% every year up to 2022. Let me give you a taste of the major projects we are planning, which my colleagues in the cabinet can discuss in more detail later. Uh, we need the volume for this. We need the audio, please. While they are fixing the the volume of the video, let me uh, just read through the prepared address. Secretary Villar of Public Works and Highways is building the Luzon Spineway Express. This is a 650 kilometer network of new or improved roads that will let you drive from La Union province in the north to Camarines Sur in the south in less than 12 hours. Along the way, you will take bypass routes so you don't have to enter the crowded streets of Metro Manila. Secretary Tugadi of Transportation is rolling out three game changers in the railway sector alone. One will be the country's first subway system, running under those same crowded Manila streets. 
The second is completion of long overdue rail projects running to the north and south of Manila. And the third will be the long awaited Mindanao Railway, which should make our president very happy. BCDA Chairman Dizon will oversee the transformation of Clark Airport in the country's second premier gateway, besides Neia. This is part of the overall upgrading of the country's entire airport system under Secretary Togade, with the development of Clark as an industrial and logistics hub. We are also building a whole new city to give residents of Metro Manila an alternative home. And I believe the video is ready. The Philippines, Asia's new tiger. For decades, our neighbors have zoomed ahead of us, building on industrial and infrastructure investments. Now, it's our turn. Last year, our economy grew 6.9%, faster than every major East Asian economy. This year and next, the IMF expects us to be the fastest growing economy in the region. After two decades of uninterrupted growth since the 1997 Asian crisis, we are realizing our immense potential at the center of the world's most dynamic region with our abundant natural and human resources. According to the United Nations, our young population is now in a demographic sweet spot since 2015. The same abundance of work-age citizens that propelled growth in China and other Asian dynamos. Now, under President Rodrigo Duterte, we are accelerating the formula of industrial and infrastructure development, driving the East Asian miracle. Already, manufacturing and investment have surged since 2010, fueled by our resolute fiscal reforms of the past decade. Now, under Duterte-nomics, the President's development agenda, we have embarked on an ambitious six-year national development program. To achieve economic growth of 7 to 8 percent every year up to 2022. To expand infrastructure spending from 2.5 percent of GDP in decades past to 5 percent this year and 7.4 percent by 2022. And to attain high middle income status and eliminate poverty in one generation. The first order of business is to level up our infrastructure using our growing budget resources and overseas development assistance, and in partnership with you, the global investor. As an archipelago, the Philippines needs lots of infrastructure to power our growth and connect our island economies to major domestic and international markets. Over the coming six years, we will spend more than $160 billion in government and overseas development funds. That's not yet counting many billions more from the private sector in PPP projects and especially in power generation, which by law is totally in the hands of business. Two-thirds of our infrastructure outlays will be for transportation. We will also spend heavily on education and social services to build up our human capital. These investments will boost growth and productivity in vast areas and sectors now lacking power, water, roads, ports, airports, telecoms, education, and social services. The World Economic Forum has predicted that the Philippines can become one of the 30 most powerful economies in the world in just 13 years. Be a part of this success story in Asia's dynamic new economic tiger, the Republic of the Philippines. I'd also like to acknowledge the, our uh, National Economic Development Authority Secretary, Erdi Pernia, sir. Uh, Secretary Lopez of Trade and Industry is looking forward to the rapid expansion of trade and industry as we build new infrastructure. The roll-on, roll-off shipping route that President Duterte inaugurated the other week with President Widodo of Indonesia will bring will bring our goods and services closer to our neighbors in ASEAN, including Cambodia. Secretary Kusi of Energy will ensure that the construction and operation of our infrastructure projects can always rely on dependable and affordable power. 
renewable and alternative energy is important to us, and that will now also include nuclear power. Ladies and gentlemen, last year we grew faster than China or Vietnam. This year and next, the IMF projects us to be the fastest growing economy within ASEAN. With Dotertonomics, with your support and participation, we will meet and perhaps even exceed the IMF's expectations. The Filipino people have waited long enough and they deserve no less from us. Thank you and mabuhay. Adrian. Thank you very much, Martin. I, I hope that uh, video is available in Chinese as well. <laughs> um, so it's a pleasure to be here with uh, such a plethora of ministerial talent to uh, hear more about Deuteronomics and the very ambitious program that you just heard outlined. Um, can I get a sense in the room of who would like to pose a question? I think if you were interested in one of the most fastest growing economies in ASEAN, then you have every opportunity to explore that growth with all the folks we have in the room with us. I can see one hand up there. And I can see, is it another hand up? Just over there. And uh, you're a very shy room of, uh, of journalists uh, at the moment. But we'll, we'll get going straight away, because I think it's important to have a chance to get the, uh, the minister's uh, detail on this plan. So can I just ask the gentleman there, and then we'll take the question from the gentleman there. Hi, my name is Sterling from Bloomberg News in Singapore. Uh, my question is about uh, infrastructure. And, uh, what is the plan for the new airport in Manila? Where would it be located? Any updates on that? Okay, and uh, the question just from there. Thank you. Uh, Sri from CNBC. I just want to get a bit more uh, colour from uh, the gentleman of the panel uh, as to what the TED Dynamics uh, can do in terms of the real a growth rate, at what point uh, in the cycle will it become materially higher and does it mean uh, more debt, more accumulation of the national debt and what does that do for Indonesia, uh, sorry, for the Philippines uh, credit profile? Okay, great. Very big question, extremely specific question. Manila's new airport, where is it going to be? What kind of detail can you provide on that, Minister? Uh, can I answer that question, sir? Absolutely. Uh, in so far as the airport development is concerned, the total airport development of the Philippines consists of varied phases. One is developing the existing. The other is opening the possibility for new airports. Let me go to the first phase, developing the existing. Right now there are two airports that serve as primary gateway into and outside the country. This is the Naia International Airport, located in Metro Manila, and the other one is the Clark International Airport, located in Clark. What are the plans? The plans is, number one, to develop the terminals at Clark International Airport, knowing fully well that at present it has two uh, state-of-the-art runway. So you have got to develop that terminal. The dark target for development of this terminal in Clark is two years to two and a half years. That airport will be complemented by a railway project, which will be connecting Metro Manila with Clark. Hopefully, what normally takes two to two and a half hours travel from Manila to Clark will be reduced to a max of 30 minutes. Number two is Naia. Naia will outlive, in my mind, its utilization because of the growth of the economy, because of the growth of population, and the improvements in technology. So that the direction for Naia is to develop what is there right now. And the development will undertake various aspects. Development of the utilization of the place using time and motion studies, among others, imputing and including technology. Number two is an improvement on the structure, on the structure that can uh, expand its capability to handle more moving passengers. And number three is to include and 
use technology so that the safety capability of that airport is enhanced. This is primordial considering what is happening all over the world right now when the threat of lawlessness and terrorism is there. So we have to do this. But as we develop what is existing, we are not shutting the door. We are not shutting the door to having other airports coming in within the purview of the requirements of uh, international regulator, airport regulatory offices like uh, uh, OKIA, you know, all these things will have to be controlled. Right now, there are two proposals. Uh, proposals in Bulacan. It is uh, a province uh, away from Metro Mandela, where uh, a proponent has uh, uh, offered to put up an airport with four run runways, increasing capabilities uh, uh, that is being looked into right now. It is coming in the nature of unsolicited proposal. The other is developing another airport in the south, referring to Sangli. Originally, an American base. The development of Sangli is uh, holistic. It will not be developed only as an airport, but also as a possible seaport. Now, the priorities, considering the time constraints that are available to us, we have to handle first what can easily be done and what easily be handled, and that is improving the present. But as we improve the present, we look at the future and the possibilities and potentials of opening other airports to handle uh, in expanded requirements of passengers within the purview of international is standards is there, and that is being looked into. So it's not so much build, build, build in the case of airports, more upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Is that right, Secretary? Yes, uh, that is the logical sequence of build, build, build. If you build, you have to operate. If you build, you have to put it in motion. So that consequently and con consequentially, build, 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 operate, operate, operate. And uh, it's not often we have such a plethora of, of ministerial talent available to answer big picture questions. I just wondered which, uh, which of your colleagues or uh, of you gentlemen would like to answer on the real growth rate question. Is it going to be debt financed? Well, I, think, uh, have, I think we have no, uh, no, no. some in the front row and we can... Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I, did, I think the concern is that with the build, 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 then the debt problem will escalate. Actually, by international standards, our debt to GDP ratio now is only about 40 percent of uh, GDP. And in fact, our, given our planning, our, uh, our advanced planning and uh, uh, we ex expect the debt to GDP ratio to even go down further to 35%. And uh, that is because uh, we, are, we have this co com comprehensive tax reform program, which is uh, likely to be uh, approved and implemented uh, next year. And uh, also the, the funding uh, for the infrastructure program will be coming from soft loans official development assistance, as well as uh, local funding uh, through private sector participation. So that is the kind of uh, uh, vision we have in terms of uh, the, debt, the debt issue. So it's not a concern to us now. Uh, we will, and of course, we will be monitoring this very closely. And if there's any danger sign of uh, exceeding, uh, you know, 50, uh, Debt to GDP ratio that is below 50% is very healthy. And you, uh, we, we really just have to make sure that it doesn't exceed 50%. But uh, we are not even uh, looking at 50%, we're looking at 35% by the time, uh, by, by 2025, or even earlier. Adrian? Uh, on the airport, let me just uh, add a, a quick uh, footnote. The development of the airport will not just be limited on the major metropolis. Remember the Philippines is an archipelago and the connectivity and mobility of other people in other places in other provinces surely will have to be enhanced. So that as we develop the primary gateway in the primary metropolis will also be 
improving and putting up new airports in the provinces. Uh, already, we are undertaking a massive program to make all the airports uh, night-weighted, meaning to say that they are able to operate at night so that uh, you can do a more rationalized and efficient flow in the metropolis. Already, uh, we will be uh, uh, doing uh, improvement of infrastructure that will guarantee not only the safety and security of the traveling public, but more importantly, the security of the entire country, the entire archipelago. We are putting uh, equipments and control to, to assure this. So that in terms of airport development, it is a holistic development that will not be centered or limited to the primary metropolis, but more importantly, to enhance mobility and connectivity with the other provinces and with the other regions. Secretary, thank you very much. Can I get a sense of uh, some more questions in the room? Lady in the front, and do we have anyone wanting to get a couple more questions about that? Yeah. Sir, uh, good afternoon, whatever. Sir, I just would like to Can know you just you tell us who you are and where you're from? Regalado of the Philippine Star. Thanks. Sir, uh, you just mentioned about 168 billion, the whole thing is worth, but I'm just curious how much of that total, uh, uh, total amount would come from China? Okay, good, good question. Or is, are there parts of it that would come from China, of all the plans that you're presenting to us now? Can we just squeeze in a couple more folks as well? So, lady there, and then follow up from the gentleman. Hi, I'm Jessica from yeah. Eco Business in Singapore. My question is, Tokenomics has been called the golden era of infrastructure for the country, but in the Philippines, I think you face really serious threats from climate change, as well as rapid urbanization and environmental degradation. So can you share whether sustainable development and sustainability plays a role in your infrastructure and economic growth plans? Thank you. And the last point from the gentleman just opposite. I think you had one, so that gentleman just there. Hi, Minister, sorry. Uh, Sterling Wong from Bloomberg News again. Sorry to press, but... Uh, uh, just, will you, could your colleague have a, have a shot just beside just you? On the airports again, between the two proposals, for Bulacan and, and South, which uh, are you favoring? Okay, why? just gentlemen there. Yeah, hi, my name is Frederick Spohr from the German business paper Handelsblatt. Um, I recently talked to some German business leaders in the Philippines and they were kind of concerned what's happening with the war on drugs because they kind of fear damage of the rule of law in general. And my question would relate to if you think that the war on drugs might actually lead to lesser foreign direct investments. Okay, thanks for that. Um, first off, if I can just turn to you, uh, Forward Secretary Vila, on the sustainability. You're obviously in charge of uh, yes. the public works. Are you making sure that this uh, build, build, build program is going to happen in a way that's not going to result in some of the kind of negative uh, carbon consequences that can go with unrestricted building programs? Yes, thank you very much for that question. And uh, of course, being in the Philippines, which is one of the countries that is the most prone to natural uh, calamities, um, it is one of the priorities of the president to invest heavily in resiliency programs. Uh, specifically, we can, we've, this, in this year's budget, we're investing about a third of our budget, 150 billion pesos, $3 billion, in uh, programs that are related to enhancing our preparedness for natural disasters. This includes retrofitting of our bridges and uh, making sure that our, uh, the roads and uh, infrastructure projects that were hit by natural disasters are repaired immediately. I think this is a very important because our GDP growth is significantly affected by uh, natural disasters. Routinely hits us, so it's important um, from an uh, economic perspective also that we invest heavily, and that is what we are doing. In fact, just really briefly to give you an idea of the scale of the spending of this department, um, we'll, this year we'll be spending 450 billion pesos, about $9 billion. Um, this is the highest ever. In fact, um, just to put in perspective, if you were to combine our DPWH budget for 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, it still would be less than what we'll be spending um, this year in infrastructure. So um, to answer your question, basically, yes, that is a priority of the president. He has tasked us to do this. And uh, the, the amount that we'll be investing in uh, disaster mitigation is unprecedented. It's the highest it's ever been spent, and uh, it will definitely, the benefits will redound throughout our country. Sergey, thank you. I know we've got the Foreign Minister designate here. I'm sure, uh, would you mind sir, taking on the question regarding uh, human rights? It's an extremely ambitious 
plan that you're outlining, which I'm sure will get a lot of people excited about the prospect of lifting tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people out of poverty, but it also comes at a time when the international community is looking at the Philippines and extrajudicial killings with great concern. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, let me assure everybody that the Filipino people are very spiritual people and life is sacred. So human rights is universal and the uh, protection of human rights is paramount. In fact, the campaign against drugs is a campaign to protect the human rights of the 105 million uh, Filipinos. You know, uh, Einstein had a uh, definition of stupidity. Uh, he said, if you keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, that's stupidity. And all throughout history, anyone who violated human rights in the name of protecting human rights did not succeed. So the president is aware that in protecting uh, human rights of all, there has to be rules, and the rules have to be universal. Uh, we were talking to the uh, European and American uh, business chambers and uh, businessmen doing business in the Philippines, and they said, sir, this is our problem. We are telling our headquarters that it is safer in the Philippines. We are telling our people in the, in the headquarters, it is not true that there are massive killings or extrajudicial killings. The problem, sir, is that in the foreign media, in Europe and the U.S., they only show uh, the rhetorics of the president when he is mad at certain uh, criticisms against the Philippines. They do not show the, the, the statements that are very presidential. Presidential. They don't show the statements where he says police cannot abuse and that they are worse than criminality. We did make a presentation in the UN, and just to give you a glimpse of the presentation, uh, um, in the six years of President Aquino, there's been more than 90,000 operations against drugs, legitimate police operations. In only 10 months, there has been 50,000 operations. So naturally, the more operations, more arrests, so 60,000 people have been arrested, more surrenderies, 1.2 million, 1 million 266,000 Filipinos who are either pushers or users have surrendered voluntarily. And uh, close to 3,000 have been killed in presumed legitimate police operation. Those are the real numbers. The numbers that you're hearing, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, are the homicides. And we have had between 11,000 to 16,000 homicides in the last six years. So for those of you who are hearing, suddenly there are 7,000 deaths in the Philippines. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Those were the deaths that were being done annually, and one death is one death too much. That's why the president is, is um, addressing it. So may we invite you, the foreign media, to visit the Philippines. Do it quietly, do it uh, with all the, the fanfare, but do it with an open mind, and we will show you that the country is now becoming more peaceful open for business, and we will protect you, your businesses, and your persons. Thank you very much. Minister. Thank you, uh, Secretary Alan. I am uh, Ramon Lopez of the Department of Trade and Industry. I just want to add that in recent reports also, uh, many have concluded that 82% actually are, are saying that the Philippines is much safer. And that's 82%. Filipinos basically love what's happening right now in the Philippines. Uh, remember that the president has won not by 82%, but by a lower number, I think 40, 50%. But that means that even those who did not vote for him like what, what's happening. That's why the approval rating is over 80%, as well as Filipinos saying that it's much safer. And therefore, we see certain numbers. Investments last year, especially the second half, was 100% higher than the first half. No? And investments January to April this year grew 31%. And exports even, all those uh, uh, manufacturing, exporting outside, they have gone uh, up by 18% for the first quarter. No? So a lot of pos very positive indicators, especially on the investments. And the investment confidence is here. Business confidence actually has gone up to 34% when it used to be less than 10%. And consumer confidence used to be negative uh, number is now positive 14%. I, I guess that's the, those are the numbers that we're seeing that showing greater confidence. And 
we simply invite everyone just to ride on the economic road and this economic breakout and don't be left behind. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I missed out the follow-up question on airports. Um, could you do? Uh, could you be more specific on which particular airport projects you are favouring and where you see uh, priority being given, Minister? Uh, right now, uh, just for the information of uh, the group, uh, we open uh, formally open the Puerto Princesa, a tourism facility in in Palawan. Put it on record. This, was, this airport was not started during our term. It was delayed in so far as completion is concerned, and we pushed and pushed for its completion. And so it is completed and now fully operational. There are airports that are to be developed also in Visayas and Mindanao and improve. Number one, of course, understandably so, will be Davao, Bacolod, Tacloban, Iloilo, and Lagindingan. There are also other airports that will have to be put up uh, at the uh, north, you have the Lawag and the Vigan airport. So you will see that the development air airports will not only be in so far as primary gateways are concerned, but more importantly also in so far as regional connectivity is concerned. Addressing more importantly the following factors. Number one, uh, the tourism impact if there is a tourism potential. Number two, the demographics of people that requires movement. And number three, the production mm -hmm. and the flow of goods, uh, whether agriculture or finished products. These are the considerations that are being put into the equation of developing uh, airports in the regions and in the provinces. Okay. And we heard also about where the money is coming from. To what extent is this money coming from China? Or... You, I think you said it's going to come in the form of soft loans and in terms of raised debt. Well, uh, the, the, uh, uh, according to our visit in October, they were going, we were going to get something like uh, nine billion, nine billion uh, of uh, ODA from and loans uh, from China, and uh, of which. Uh, Three billion would be soft loan, and the others would be more higher uh, interest rate. And uh, also, that's only for the government. But there, there were a number of private sector memoranda of agreement that uh, would also boost. Fifteen of those were uh, memoranda of agreement uh, between uh, private sectors of the two countries. So th that is the kind of initial numbers we have. And uh, those will have to be, uh, very, uh, you know, confirmed uh, when we visit uh, again China in uh, Beijing and Japan. Japan, we have something like, uh, in in peso terms, nine billion, nine billion ODA, so dollars. So that that's uh, the kind of. So it's uh, more or less uh, comparable to the uh, order of magnitude that uh, we're getting from China, and that is because. Uh, I think there's some competition now between uh, Japan and China in terms of uh, getting ahead in the Philippines, so, which is good. The more competition, the better for both uh, funders and well, as well as the, uh, uh, those who, uh, the beneficiary, the recipients of the funds. Thank you very much. Um, just a very look time, one very quick final point. I'm sure people um, want to know the, the president uh, has been incredibly outspoken. You've said... Uh, how popular senator he is in in the philippines and certainly that rhetoric uh, has undoubtedly helped him win popularity but in the outside world is labeling this program deuteronomics at risk of alienating uh, potential investors and also uh, german pension holders or other pension holders who might say well i i don't want my pension invested in in somewhere like that so yeah Philippines is a nation that is in a hurry to improve the life of the Filipinos. And uh, now Philippines is open for business. And it's not uh, the question of uh, edit, uh, that where the money is coming from. It's not just only China, but Philippines is open for business. So uh, all uh, nationalities are 
Welcome to Invest in the Philippines uh, in our Duterte economics. So uh, we have a whole nation approach where uh, all the agencies, all the ministers are working together to make these things happen. And uh, for the energy that I represent, uh, we need additional 43,700 megawatts uh, to realize, to support that. And uh, that 43,000 uh, megawatts is something like additional of 100 billion uh, investment available for all willing investors. And uh, we're saying that this is open, uh, op uh, open for all. Minister. And if I may add quickly also, precisely that's why we are having this Duterte nomics uh, as a way really to communicate that Duterte is not just about drugs. <laughs> President Duterte really means business, this change, making big changes. Peace and order situation has to be the basic foundation for investments to come in. So that's being addressed. But all the other social economic agenda, the policies, the programs that have to be instituted are the ones we are trying to explain uh, in this Duterte Nomics uh, forum. Definitely Duterte Nomics is bringing change. It's not the usual growth that we're having. It's inclusive growth. And it's for the first time that we're talking about addressing inequality, making the powerless empowered. So we're trying to empower the nation. Empowering the bottom of the pyramid is empowering the nation. And we want to really bring prosperity for all. So it's only in this government that we're trying to really even give extra focus on the micro, small, and medium enterprises. And we have a lot of programs, new initiatives that have not been done before that are being done now to really connect the micro SMEs even to the global value chain, really making smarter entrepreneurs so that they can get to enjoy all the benefits of all this uh, macroeconomic foundation, peace and security that we are trying to build. Thank you. Just last yeah, one from uh, your colleague. Uh, okay. You know, you know the, the, the whole part oh, of, we have competing ministers. The whole part of the third dynamics <laughs> is one word. Uh, it's uh, building uh, fast on schedule and getting things done quickly because uh, the president is impatient and so are the ministers. They're impatient too. So we get things done faster, which is a contrast to previous uh, administrations. Thank you. Yeah. Minister, you can be the final yeah. impatient minister. Okay. Uh, the the eternal uh, economics, this program is not just a built, built, built economic platform. This is a platform that has accompanying ways of doing things, upon which the success of this program, the success of this project, can be assured to move on. What are these? Number one, the president will not allow corruption in any form, in any shape. He will be uncompromising, President Duterte will be uncompromising when it comes to corruption. In other words, given this principle of no corruption, you actually put into fixed platform the level playing field. Number two, one of the program which is uh, program war against drug and a lot of other things is to assure an environment of safety and security. So on one hand you have no corruption, on the other safe and secure. And that is what we are trying to do and that is what the president is impressing every one of us to do. So that that businessman will be assured of level playing field and the businessman will be assured of a safe and secure place of business. Number three, we follow the principle of accountability and transparency. Let me just cite one thing. Number one is how the process will be implemented. We have what we call the portals of uh, uh, freedom of information. This portal will just, you can download all the details of what are the projects that are being pursued, what are, who are interested in the project, what is the status of the project, open, okay? One thing is in the bidding. We are doing uh, an online screening bidding. In other words, open to all. The full accountability and transparency is in place, and as it progresses, we will improve using technology. So you have no corruption, peace and order, 
full transparency and accountability. You marry these ways of doing things into the projects which we are expounding and telling public to come, telling the other nation to come and come join us in this journey. You are assured of your return of investment. This is what Duterte economics is all about. Come to the Philippines, we take care of your investment, we create a scenario where you will have a fair return of your investment because we have a safe and secure, transparent and accountable government, and principally, no corruption, level playing field. Thank you, Secretary Vila. One very final, very quick last word to you. Yes, uh, again, thank you, and I'd just like to reiterate this uh, Duterte economics is one of the most uh, um, is the, an unprecedented uh, program. As we know, countries in Asia, before they, there's a need to invest heavily in infrastructure to unlock the potential. Routinely, we lose uh, uh, 2.4 billion, $50 million a day due, due to congestion. We lose a lot of GDP growth due to the natural calamities, which is why we're investing heavily, and we're using the most advanced software to ensure that uh, these projects are implemented on time and without any corruption. So. Um, I can see everyone, we invite everyone to go to the Philippines and see what's happening, the growth story of the Philippines. I think it's, it will be a spectacular story, and uh, I invite all the investors to come and see what's happening in our country. Thank you very much. Ministers, thank you very much. I'm sure there will be opportunities to talk to each of them uh, after this session. In the meantime, have a very good and productive meeting. Thank you.